Hey everybody out there in YouTube world and in a previous video I showed uh, most of South America especially you know from Brazil on down and from you know Peru on down so uh, this section I got the finally got the entire continent of South America covered as far as the flag collection goes and uh, so let's get started and uh, this would be in the same general region as I sh showed the Suriname flag in the previous South America video. So this is, uh, these border on each side of Suriname. So starting with this one is uh, French Guiana. If you uh, were to hypothetically join the French Foreign Legion, um, one of the main duty stations you'd likely get abroad would be Djibouti in Northeast Africa, or um, Gu French Guiana, and uh, the way their uh, overseas territories are uh, administrated, it's treated like as if you were to enter France itself, so even though it would be on another island far away or another continent far away, you'd be officially entering the nation of France. And, you know, so is with French Guiana, and it usually predominantly black uh, countries, especially in the Western Hemisphere, tend to go for that yellow and green and that red color. And uh, so I would roughly compare it to a French East Indian culture. Um, they're not really that far inland as far as developments in uh as far as the uh, logistical sides and uh, the economic disparities, it's very much a third world country, um, except in name. And um, so it's a really interesting, and as I said, French Foreign Legion, they do a lot of their covert ops and jungle training in uh, French Guiana. So it um, be kind of like going to Hawaii if you join the... American Army, except La Légion Estrange is uh, everybody else but French people, and uh, that's another story for another time, and I, of course, you know, military regalia, like any normal hetero male, is uh, a big interest to me, so, you know, here it is, it's the upper part of South America, and of course, as I said, they're, they border Suriname, and then on the bottom, they border Brazil. And on the other side of Suriname, also above Brazil, in um, Venezuela, on the other side is Guiana, and uh, they're roughly I consider them kind of a you know Atlantic uh, West Indian you know a West Indian African based island culture. And uh, kind of like Jamaica, they have their own Pidgin English, kind of like Jamaican Patois, where the dialect is so thick you really have to uh, read subtitles. And uh, I'm not joking either. So, um, very interesting. And uh, probably maybe the better developed of the three different uh, Guianas. And that, I mean... Uh, uh, also includes Suriname was also called Dutch Guiana, and uh, that's how my interest started because of Suriname via my Dutch connection, which is another separate story, and I say that often, don't I? It, um, so here it is, Guiana, and um, I really don't know it, how they are as far as tour tourist infrastructure, but like the other uh, countries, uh, coast. Uh, Guiana's a lot of the population and their er, their uh, development is on the coastal area, you know, in around the coastal area. And then when you get further inland, it's very remote, thick jungles, and you know, some places you need a. It'll take a couple days or more to get via these uh, little river canoes and such, or by these little special river boats, and. Um, so that's that for the top half. And now, 
the next three flags cover a region that was formerly known as Gran Colombia because uh, when Simon Bolivar fought for independence and if you don't know who Simon Bolivar is he's kind of like the uh, South American equivalent of George Washington and so you know he wanted kind of like a what the United States was doing you know break away from Spain and you know their own national determination and uh, that Tory that territory of uh, Gran Colombia also included what is now current day Panama so up until 1933 1903 yeah 1903 you know, and when the canal was still pretty much getting built and completed, and uh, they broke away from Colombia because the United States conveniently recognized the sovereignty of Panama and in independence because it didn't want to uh, deal with the government of Colombia because they were dragging their feet, and uh, so they just, hey, this, we now recognize the sovereign Panama and. And that was less red tape to go through because they just wanted to get building and get started. And I'll maybe I'll talk about history of the canal zone later. But uh, this in the bottom part, like right before you hit Peru, this is Ecuador. And uh, the yellow, blue, the same pattern except for the emblem. It's uh, pretty much the exact same colors as the uh, Colombian flag. And what I like about this little emblem, besides the scenery, is uh, the condor. And, like, it's a very, it's an ugly but also very majestic bird. People think that they're, you know, like vultures, but a vulture is mainly a scavenger. You know, dead and rotting, you know, that doesn't put up a fuss. Yeah, that's a vulture, but the uh, condor is both uh, raptor and scavenger. So it, it's like a kind of like a eagle and a ha and a vulture in one, and uh, more uh, vicious. Uh, and they are huge birds, as far as you know, in this day and time. They're one of the most the the largest flying bird in existence. In uh, it's almost like watching a di a dinosaur. If you ever seen a condor that got released in the wild, or you see them in the zoo, I mean they are huge, and then. They have the biggest wingspan. And in Panama, we have these beautiful hawks with these cocoa brown feathers. And then we have the vultures, and these they're ugly, and they'd come, they used to come down and rip up our garbage until we got the lids. So that's life in uh, Latin America, especially in the equator. So Especially Ecuador is equator in Spanish, so it's... Uh, named after the particular uh, GPS area in the world. So that's Ecuador, and I know people from Ecuador, and um, that's where the Andes mountain chain starts, you know, right going down through Peru and Chile, and uh, they have nice coastal areas, but it's a, this is the part of South America when, you know, you're leaving that jungle area and you're going into temperate, you know, forested climates. So you need a jacket, and especially in the higher altitude, you know, the higher up you go, the colder it is if, if uh, you're versed in uh, geography and topography. This is uh, Colombia's neighbor to the north, and they're having some hot-button issues, and uh, I really don't like their government because they're a bunch of commies ever since Hugo Chavez got in charge, you know, a good while back, and then uh, Maduro who replaced them, and the, um, everyone's screaming at the elections rigged, so, um, but I really hope for the sake of the Venezuelan people, they get that, uh, that, uh, retarded commie government out of there, because they used to be, when I was a kid way back when, you know, before Hugo Chavez, they were, uh, almost like a first world nation, and they were the, also, they're the only, non-Middle Eastern country that's a member of OPEC, which are the oil-producing uh, nations. It's like a, like a trade treaty or a compact, whatever you call it. And uh, so their, their main industry is, or at least has been, 
oil production and export exports, and uh, especially in this side of the uh, world. And uh, so there's a little emblem up in the corner. Oh. And uh, the stars, and I take it, it represents as, uh, la provincias, represents the provinces. So uh, I'm not really in a hurry to go to Venezuela. They're also known for the uh, second largest slum in the entire Western Hemisphere after Brazil. It's, uh, yeah, it's in uh, their capital city, Caracas. So if you see photos or movies about it take place in Caracas. You see that huge hill, and it's like all the you know from top to bottom. It's just a big shanty, uh, shanty town, and it, you know horrible poverty and crime. It's so dangerous. Even the police don't go there, and uh, kind of like so the uh, favelas in Brazil. They don't get too deep in. And here it is, our neighbor to the south, Colombia, and we have a lot of Colombians. I have uh, Colombians in the family related by marriage and also some extended family. <coughs> and so far, that's the only South American country I've been in at all. Because <coughs> I had a layover coming from London five years ago. Because I did one of those trips. I went to South Africa. And then on the way, I went to London. To, actually, I went to Birmingham, England via Qatar. And... Uh, then, when I was leaving the UK, I went from London back to Panama via Bogota. I had a bit of a layover, but I got to see another part of the world, even though it's kind of from a bubble. So, you know, that's uh, off the country's bucket list. Colombia. And, uh, like I said, I don't want to, to uh, de take away from the Colombian culture. They got a lot of beautiful things. And, uh, of course, they got a lot of similar problems like a lot of South American and Central American countries like you know crime and poverty and uh, the the uh, area that borders Panama is dangerous and it's controlled by fart guerrillas or leftist guerrillas and uh, but they have really nice areas with nice plazas you know you got to watch your wallet when you're out there you know be uh, street smart you know, stay away from dodgy areas, just like anywhere in the world. Uh, but it's a beautiful culture. They speak of nice, smooth Spanish. But uh, for me, you know, aside from having to go through passport control to visit, it's almost like going to a, another state. You know, like for me to go from Panama to Colombia or Venezuela, that, that's about as exotic as if I went from uh, Omaha to Detroit or Omaha to uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah, it's a different area, it's a different environment, but there's still a lot of that Midwest culture. So, you know, with uh, Colombia, there's still, you know, still a lot of that similar, you know, um, Latin American jungle culture, you know, from Panama, because it's still up there, uh, most of uh, that country is still physically up in the equator area, and uh, it's, it's in a tropical area, and uh, what else can I say about uh, Colombia, so if you want to go to Colombia to or from Panama, yeah, don't go by land, because uh, that's the stupid dangerous route, you can take a, I think for around $100, give or take. If you want to correct me in the comments, if you're from that area, or you're from Panama or Colombia, you know, correct me, but I think for about around $100, you can ride a ferry ship or a passenger ship uh, to, uh, I think, I believe, one of the coastal cities of Colombia. And um, I can't really remember it right now. But, uh, and, or, you know, fly to Colombia, like from Panama City to Bogota, it's like just a little over an hour. And uh, if I was going to go further down to South America, like, um, door to Argentina might open. It's not certain, it's not set in stone, but I might be going to Argentina maybe in early 2025 after the holidays, depending on how things are going. 
It, uh, and it would just be for a week. It would just be a whirlwind visit. I'll say hello to some people, you know, that I've, you know, contacted online for ages and, uh, and get to see another part of South America. It, uh, you know, there's like that many places in the world I want to go and that much money and resources to do it all. But the good thing about being in Panama is, you know, if I want to visit other parts of South America, you know, it's really not that much of a, st of a stretch, especially Colombia is just a border away, just a short flight away. It would probably take me about six to seven hours if I flew direct to Argentina, but likely because I'm a cheap ass, I'll get a, I'll have a layover in Bogota because they're another major hub, you know, for people going to and from South America, just like Panama. So, um, who knows? But, uh, you know, as I said, there's, I only have like, you know, so many places in the world that I'd really love to visit. And then again, you know, not that much money and resources to do it all. So I have to be very picky, you know, very selective and make sure that I really want to go there. But again, luckily, you know, the Caribbean is just to hop across the ocean if, or a hop across the sea if I just want to, if I want to go to Dominican Republic or Curaçao and what have you. And uh, again, that's how I've been since I was a kid. I always love world geography. And I'm going to cut it right here. And if there's any other parts of the world or flags you want me to talk about, a uh, viewer requested uh, Nova Scotia, so... Maybe I'll add that to my Amazon cart next time. And, uh, but the next set of flags I'm going to show is Great Britain, the British Isles. Thanks for watching.